And we are back. Welcome back to the Players You Need series, the series where I try and give you tips of the players I think you should be looking at putting into your fantasy football team for the upcoming game week, whilst also building a team of all of those players and then challenging you guys to see if your team, or if you wanted to build your own team, capable of beating my best of upcoming game week team. Let's have a quick look at how we got on last week and see how many people were able to beat it before going into the upcoming game week. As always, if you enjoy this series, please let me know by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Let's get straight in to that game week five team. So, 75 points for the midweek game week, mainly carried by Erling Haaland, as I'm sure a lot of your teams were this week. 34 points if you did go for him as the captain. Of course, a second hat-trick in a row for him. There were a couple of disappointing picks this week. First off, Rodrigo getting himself injured only 30 minutes into the Leeds game was a bit disappointing. I was annoyingly, and I did even say in the last video, I was going to go for Zaha, but it did say that he wasn't going to play. And lo and behold, he not only played, but scored as well. The other major disappointment for me was Vardy. I mean, I say major disappointment. As a Manchester United fan, I was obviously thrilled that Leicester were absolutely appalling last night. And Vardy did nothing. But given his history against Manchester United, I expect him to do more. But it was a bit of a gamble. All in all, like we say, a score of 75. Probably could have done a little bit better in defence. And if I'd have managed my bench a little bit better, I definitely would have put Andreas as my first sub instead of Milner. But that is the way it goes. All in all, like we say, 75 points. Let's see how many people won last in the midweek fixtures. So... Week 5 winners are on the screen now, so congratulations if you were able to make it onto that list. I'm not going to complain too much about the people that beat me this week. The majority are within the 70s and the 80s, so only beating the team by a small margin. But congratulations to the top four there, Sudan, James, Chris and Arthrava. I apologise if I butchered that name, but all getting 90 and of course Sudan with a massive 110 points for the game week. An unbelievable score for them which sees them as this week's overall winner. Let's have a look at what those scores have done to the SO99 League. So, here is the top 15 as it currently stands. James Morris with that 97 score, putting him up to the top of the table after five game weeks. 357 points from five game weeks is an unbelievable score, um, if we're being quite honest. Um, that is on track for a very, very high season score if that can be maintained. My own team, sadly, is chilling down in the 20s. Um, I think I'm on 250, so I'm already 100 points behind with my main team. So hopefully I can turn it around, but then I don't have Haaland. So <laughs> we shall see. Uh, Pep Roulette, I think, is going to be coming into its full force in the coming days. So we'll see what happens once that starts happening. Will the people with Haaland start buckling or not? Anyway... Let's have a look at the new game week team. This is going to be the best of game week six team and the players I think you should be looking at putting into your team if you have not got them already. And as always, of course, we will be starting with the bench, which is just going to be the cheapest players available. I am still going to go for Ward and Andreas because they are playing. However, Congolo is now a 3.9 player I've put in just for even more budget. You will notice that I have also left a defender on the bench. That is for my own reasons, which I will explain in a moment. Let's get into the actual team. And we are going to start with the man of the moment, which is, of course, Erling Haaland. I am going to go with the attackers first in this video because I genuinely think that there are four attackers you should be looking at for this week. And I can obviously only pick three. So I wanted to mention them all first. So Haaland, I'm still going to go with. Not going to go for him as captain this week. You'll see my captain in a moment. And around him, I am going to go for someone I think everyone should probably be looking at trying, certainly this week, which is Alexander Izak. Scored against Liverpool. It has him as a 75%. I'm more than sure that he's going to play at home to Crystal Palace. And if he does, I think he's the sort of player that will cause Crystal Palace some problems. And like I said, he's made a good debut. I think it's an opportunity for new fantasy football fans to give this guy a go. And I'm going to give him a go for my best of team this week and see how it pays out. On the other side, someone who is a bit more consistent and has had a good start to the season. We are going to put Ivan Tony back in. At home to Leeds, I think that is a, just a good pick. I know Leeds have done well, but 
Brentford have also started well and at home to Leeds, you'd like to think Ivan Tony is more than capable of getting a goal. The fourth striker that I could not go for this week was Harry Kane. I would thoroughly advise people to go for Harry Kane if they haven't already got him. It's kind of gone under the radar, but he has also made a fantastic start to this season. But uh, given how many points that the Haaland has got, people are now taking Kane out for Haaland, which is understandable. But it has also meant that Kane's price has started dropping which is unbelievable considering he's got the second most points of any striker so far. So if you have the budget for Haaland and Kane, I would thoroughly recommend Kane. I sadly do not have that much budget this week, which is why in midfield we are going to start with Kulusevski. Tottenham, of course, at home to Fulham. Fulham have made a good start to the season as well, but I think Tottenham should have the strength to beat them. And Kulusevski has been really their second main man behind Kane so far this season. Son hasn't quite turned up yet. Next in the midfield, I'm going to go for Phil Foden, and that is why there is a substitute on the bench ready to come in in case Pep Roulette does not go my way. That is also the reason why Haaland is not captain. Uh, Man City's first Champions League game is away to Sevilla on Tuesday, so I think there is a chance some big-name players won't be playing at the weekend against Aston Villa. The reason that I've gone for Haaland and Foden is because they were both taken off during the game, which tends to suggest that Pep wants to start them in the next one. So that's how I've judged it. I'm going for Foden and Haaland. They've both made phenomenal starts to the season. And that is why they're in my team this week. Rounding off the midfield, I'm going to go for two Liverpool players. I'm going to go for Salah once again and Luis Diaz. Now, you might be thinking why I've done that, considering Liverpool's poor start. And that is because A, Salah has still been scoring points on the regular. Luis Diaz has been a threat. And I think given the fact it's the Merseyside derby, I think you're going to see Everton come out at Liverpool. A lot of teams have sat back and restricted Liverpool this season. I think the occasion of a Merseyside derby will just mean that Everton go out, which will then leave space. And I think Liverpool will beat Everton quite comfortably this weekend. And you'll see that in my prediction video tomorrow. So for me, it is Salah and Diaz with Salah as captain instead of Haaland for the aforementioned Pep Roulette risk reasons. Finally then, we have the defence. And in goal, I'm going to start with Nick Pope, who has been absolutely outstanding for Newcastle. And I hope he will be England's number one choice for the remaining Nations League games in the, well, this month. We are now in September, so hopefully he will be, but it'll probably still be Pickford. Um, I am struggling for clean sheets this week. I think there is going to be a lot of goals in all of the games this week, so it is tough, and that is also why I've only gone for three at the back. But Pope, I think, is going to got a good chance of both clean sheet and save points, so he is my pick in goal. Into the defence then, and we start with Nico Williams, the cheapest. Well, he was the cheapest. He's still 1 million, sorry, 0.1 million above the cheapest. Forrest at home to Bournemouth. Again, good chance for a clean sheet. He's playing right wing back. Slight risk of his position at with the signing of Serge Aurier, but I think he will be playing for now. Next to him, I'm going to go for Ivan Perisic. Again, fantastic start to the season for him. He seems to be the regular left wing back for Spurs now. And he has been taking set pieces, corners and free kicks, etc. And like I said, since I can't have Kane, I've gone for his two sort of main assisters so far this season in Perisic and Kulusevski. And rounding off the defence, I'm going to go for Max Kilman. Uh, I think Wolves have been defending really well. I really like Max Kilman as a player. I'd like to see him as a potential England call-up. And at 4.5 million at home to Southampton, I think he is a good cheap pick for this week. And rounding off the team, I do have one final sub, and that is Estupinian from Brighton on the bench in case a likes of Phil Foden or if Isaac is injured, then he will come in. At home to Leicester, Brighton this week, he of course has been playing left wing back the last couple of games and looked fairly decent. And if Leicester do play the way they played last night, I don't see them scoring against Brighton either. So I think Estupinian is a good pickup for any team this week and going forward. And that is going to round off the team. Um, as always, let me know down in the comments what team you are going to be rocking this week. If you have any questions about my team, I've been enjoying answering some questions about the teams in the comments over the last couple of weeks. And finally, of course, we must issue the challenge. If you think that your team can beat the best of Game Week 6 team, join our league. The code is on screen now. And as you see in this video, all winning managers will be shouted out in the next Game Week video which will be next weekend as it is a Champions League and Europa League week. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you then.